Review time is the home for all things theme parks. Stay up to date with our videos by subscribing and tapping the bell icon. In the 1990s, it seemed that the next big thing would be mini indoor theme parks popping up in a major city near you. Disney was trying their hand with the now defunct concept known as Disney Quest, a quasi arcade combined with reimagined classic Disney attractions. But one of the more surprising groups to attempt the idea was Blockbuster Video, which seemed to be dominating the video rental market. But with new mediums and competition constantly emerging, they needed a new edge to bring people back to the brand. And what idea would be better than an adults only indoor theme park? Blockbuster thought they could do better than the competition and marketed their block party idea as a place where grown ups go to kid around. Entire city blocks would be redeveloped into a fully themed indoor park, complete with games, attractions, and even a giant play center for the young at heart. Unfortunately, only two block parties would ever open up in the United States, as they weren't the savior the blockbuster company was hoping for, instead becoming a hotspot for rowdy 20-somethings. And whilst blockbuster were busy trying to keep their balls in the pit, Guess we're too busy trying to get theirs out. For review time, I'm Luke, and this is the story of Block Party, Blockbuster's attempt at an indoor theme park. From its humble beginnings in Dallas, Texas in 1985, Blockbuster Video saw rapid expansion. And by the 1990s, Blockbuster was a household name and multi-billion dollar company built on video rentals. But Blockbuster and Wayne Hazenga, the man behind its rapid success, were worried about the future of entertainment and how new technologies such as video on demand could threaten the rental store model. The company knew it had to look at branching out of simply renting video games, movies and music. Hazenga had a number of big ideas to transition the company, including buying a cable provider and at one point, even drew up plans for a $1 billion Floridian entertainment and sports complex that would have featured its own blockbuster theme park, joining the ranks of Disney and Universal. However, these plans were risky and expensive, and instead Blockbuster decided that indoor-themed entertainment would be the route to help redefine their company. In 1993, plans were drawn up by iTech Entertainment for the Blockbuster Block Party, a high-tech indoor theme park contained inside an entire city block. The $8 million Block Party Complex wasn't a children's arcade like Chuck E. Cheese, but a project aimed at the elusive 18 to 45-year-old market, with children required to be supervised at all times by an adult and being completely kicked out at 8 p.m allowing for a more adult atmosphere after dark with pumping party music to match. For the time, Block Party was one of the most advanced, dynamic recreational experiences out there. This would be almost five years before Disney tackled their own version of the concept with Disney Quest. The first blockbuster Block Party would open in Albuquerque, New Mexico on December 19, 1994, with the second identical location opening up in Indianapolis in January of 1995, with the entire project designed to be copy and pasted in cities across America. Stepping through the doors of the block party, you would have entered a neon lit cityscape, their answer to Main Street USA. On the cartoonified street, the lighting was set to low to give the place a feeling of permanent nighttime, with a specially installed sound system helping to bring the urban feeling to life. With invisible jets and helicopters buzzing overhead, people hailing cabs and fire engines wailing by, maybe on their way to fix the melted fire hydrant. Splitting off from the central street would have been a number of attractions and offerings to bring the block party to life. First though, you would have had to visit Infomania, the newsstand-themed ticket booth, 
where you could load money onto a prepaid reloadable card. You would then swipe this card at the entrance of games or attractions to pay for the experience. Prices ranged from around 50 cents for a video or pinball game up to $3.25 for the power grid. Speaking of the power grid, this was one of the biggest draws of the center. It was basically a supersized McDonald's or Burger King play place for adults, where you could explore the multi-level mazes, slide down the giant tube slides, and of course, dive into a ball pit. Similar to the classic play place, guests had to remove their shoes to play inside. But quite differently, the power grid featured a low atmospheric lighting with the tubes pulsating along to a musical beat. Exiting out of the power grid next around was Super Bloopers, a sports-themed bar slash restaurant that served the fusion finger food style that was all the rage in the 1990s. Next around was a futuristic themed party room that could be hired out for events, playing a variety of music videos on screens all around the walls. One of the major attractions in Block Party was the Go Motion Pictures, a motion simulator ride by iWorks Entertainment that was compared favorably to Star Tours at the time of opening. Instead of an entire ride vehicle moving though, each individual seat would shake, twist, tilt, rise and fall to make you feel part of the action. Six five minute films were in rotation, changing on the hour with some more interesting offerings being Robocop, where you had to save the mayor, as well as Dino Island, where you would explore an island filled with dinosaurs, which definitely wasn't Jurassic Park. The final major section was Flippers, a pinball-themed video game arcade containing all the favorites, like Dance Dance Revolution, a large number of racing games, as well as Virtua Alley a section where guests could play a first-person on-rail shooter that was one of the first VR arcade games in the world. Your final stop on your trip to Block Party, though, was of course the gift shop. This one themed as the city's fire station, which would burst into flames at random moments. Block Party seemed to be a smash hit with guests, with visitors claiming the park always seemed to be packed to the brim. But the idea went no further than these two test locations, and the rapid expansion plans were cancelled almost immediately after they had opened. The major catalyst for the cancellation of the plans was the merger of Blockbuster and Viacom for an $8.4 billion stock swap in early 1994, right in the middle of Block Party's development. It seemed this new combined company wasn't interested in expanding the idea and building further locations and would instead acquire Discovery Zone, a chain of children's entertainment facilities featuring indoor climbing mazes, slides, ball pits and arcades acquired under the Blockbuster company's name in 1995. Blockbuster would try a few other experiments around the same time such as Blockbuster Golf and Games in Sunrise, Florida an entertainment complex for the whole family that featured mini golf, a play place and an arcade that would open in 1994. The location would see decent success, but would be permanently closed in the year 2000. On April 21st, 2002, the Indianapolis, the final surviving blockbuster block party would close for good with no official reason being given, but plenty of Unofficial reasons floated around such as drugs and other adult activities becoming synonymous with the ball pit. In the 90s, it made sense that companies thought the next big thing in themed entertainment would be smaller, regional locations designed to be copy and pasted in cities across America. And it was an ambitious move of Blockbuster to be one of the first companies to tackle a project like this opening up their block party four years before Disney would also fail to pull off the same idea with Disney Quest. Ultimately though, the idea of these grandiose mini theme parks didn't exactly work with guests who simply preferred to visit big, 
fantastical theme parks as a proper holiday. And the general decline of arcades in the 90s and the costs of keeping things fresh in such a rapidly expanding time of technology made these ideas better on the drawing board than in real life. But who knows, if the block party had been a smashing success, Blockbuster might not simply be a footnote in the history of home entertainment here in 2020. From the home of all things theme parks, I'm Luke for Review Time. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing.